Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Timothy S., Lisa W., and Randy L. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Today's episode will be an abbreviated one as a family pickleball game has developed for later this evening, so I'm going to do my best to make it over there. John Carmack, a very well-known computer programmer and video game developer said, Tesla's FSD has made significant strides in the last year and I'm feeling very confident about this bet. I've made multiple two hour drives without touching the wheel. The bet that John made, a $10,000 bet that by January 1st, 2030, completely autonomous self-driving cars, level five will be commercially available for passenger use in major cities. John did complain about the hands-free aspect of 12 12.4 going away when you wear sunglasses, but Elon had some good news, saying that should be fixed in 12.5. In this thread, Elon also said Tesla has done so much that would be considered AI research breakthroughs, but we're laser focused on making it work rather than crowing about breakthroughs. Having a large fleet is only one piece of the puzzle. Plenty of other car companies produce way more cars than Tesla, but are nowhere on generalized self-driving. There you have Elon saying we're laser focused on making FSD work and for whatever it's worth to you, Elon's profile picture on X is now him with some laser eyes. Naturally, the crypto community is pumped about this as this did happen after Biden dropped out, which is generally seen to be a positive thing for the crypto world and blue eyes specifically have referred to Ethereum. But publicly, everything we've heard from Elon is that he's not really that into crypto. He supports Doge as the coin of the people, but this could be FSD related. It could be tech or AI in general. So I'm I'm not gonna speculate, there are a few options. Let me know what you think, or it could be nothing at all. Ashok Elaswamy said, if you liked FSD 12.4, you're gonna love 12.5. But as we know, not everybody actually liked 12.4. I do think one of these releases will feel like another breakthrough or a step change, but we have to keep in mind that pretty much every release has been hyped up by Elon. Here are some of Elon's past comments to make a point. 12.4 is a big release, should arguably be 13. Then he repeated the same thing once again. He also said 12.4 is roughly five to 10X improvement in miles per intervention versus 12.3. 12.4 is a major improvement and 12.5 is a whole other level. When in reality, version 12.4 so far hasn't made it past about 5% of the fleet. So even if things look great at the validation stage, once it begins the wider rollout, that doesn't always mean things are going to go how Tesla and Elon are expecting. But 12.4 may never go to a wide release and that's because it's being reported 12.5 is now available and being sent out to employees. Here's the screenshot on software 2024.20.10. Three big things we're expecting with 12.5. It's available on the Cybertruck and we know plenty of celebrities and people with huge audiences have the Cybertruck, so that will be interesting. Second, you should be allowed to wear sunglasses and still have the hands-free function work. And three, it's supposed to finally actually merge the city driving and the highway stack into one. And who knows if it'll be included in 12.5, but in May, Elon did say that both Vanish and actually Smart Summon are coming soon. This all but confirms our speculation last week that 12.4 may not actually make it to a wide release and that it would be replaced with 12.5. Here we are. On X, Elon confirmed what he said earlier this year, Tesla will have genuinely useful humanoid robots in low production for Tesla internal use next year, and hopefully high production for other companies in 2026. I would emphasize hopefully for that latter point, but if Tesla can keep giving good updates on Optimus progress, we know the market starts pricing events in roughly six to 12 months in advance. So if Tesla proves Optimus is useful internally next year, then we may start to get a pricing in of future Optimus production starting next year. As always, absolutely no guarantees this actually happens, but I think it's going to be a major deal when it does because most analysts are including $0 of valuation for Tesla's Optimus line. That includes even the most bullish of analysts like Kathy Wood and Tasha Keeney at ARK Invest, their model still has $0 per 
priced in for Optimus, which means this is another alpha opportunity. Somehow, protesters in Giga Berlin are still up in arms complaining about Tesla's water use. We've debunked this many times, but the prime minister of Brandenburg said, we're well advised to use water sparingly. Tesla is the wrong one to criticize in that. Tesla represents a huge benefit for the capital region and shows that we can start investing very quickly in the current conditions in Germany. Elon has made significant contributions to this investment and for that, we are grateful. During phase one of construction at Giga Berlin, Tesla got permission from the Water Association to use up to 1.4 million cubic meters of water every year. Last year, only one third of that volume was used. And car production at Giga Berlin requires 2.28 cubic meters of water per car. That's a third less than the industry average of 3.68 cubic meters of water. A Tesla supplier, Futronic, which creates and builds vehicle transmissions and powertrains, is now setting up its first ever US location in Buda, which is roughly 30 minutes from Austin. Futronic aims to start finishing the space by at least the third quarter of this year, and production is to start by the end of the third quarter 2025. This is more of the same, Tesla slowly but surely localizing its supply chains. We talked about the crowd strike outage on Friday and how it did have an impact on Tesla and its suppliers. Well, the word is now that Giga Berlin and Model Y production was able to bounce back quickly within the day. The word is vehicle production is already back to normal. Elon said nice work by the XAI and X teams, Nvidia and supporting companies getting the Memphis Supercluster training started at around 4.20 a.m local time. With 100,000 liquid cooled H100s on a single remote direct memory access fabric, it's the most powerful AI training cluster in the world. This is a significant advantage in training the world's most powerful AI by every metric by December this year. And you better believe that the learnings that come from getting this cluster up and running will in the future be transferred to Tesla getting its supercomputers up and running quickly. As of tomorrow, the Cybertruck will be making its debut in Rocket League. And not only that, but the Cybertruck will also make its debut in Fortnite. As of May this year, Fortnite was averaging around 230 million monthly active players. And Drive Tesla reported that Tesla has been granted an exemption to allow the Cybertruck steer by wire tech on Canadian roads. The exemption expires in 2029. There are still other things that need to happen for Cybertruck to be sold in Canada, but a step in the right direction. The official Cybertruck account replied saying still aiming for this year. Tesla is now offering $1,000 off your next Tesla if you upgrade your enhanced autopilot to FSD and transfer it to a new Tesla and you take delivery by September 30th this year. If you take delivery by August 15th, you'll also receive three months of free supercharging. You may look at me now and think, I don't know, Dylan, you look pretty average to me. Why should I listen to what you say about training or wellness? If I had more time, I'd share some stories, but for now, I'll just say, don't judge a book by its cover. I'm slowly working my way back from some setbacks that were out of my control and for the record happened long before I even knew what AG1 was since I get that question a lot. I want to bring you along and show you this unfiltered journey. And a quick tip, rather than seeing how many reps you can do, see how few you can do while only targeting a specific muscle. Control every second through the full range. In this case, squeeze your chest to start the movement and the same at the top. Try to relax all other muscles and place all of the tension directly on your chest. I did three reps here and it took me to failure. You really don't need much to stimulate muscle growth and in the coming months, more will be revealed. AG1 is the sponsor of this video and let me tell you, I had plenty of other options for sponsors in this category, but I chose AG1 for two simple reasons. It's backed by studies and research and the ingredients are of the highest quality. With Huberman and Atia on the AG1 team, I knew they'd keep making the product better. In a recent independent study, AG1 found that 91% of customers needed less coffee after just 60 days of taking AG1. Personally, I've not been able to find anything nearly as nutrient dense. I do like the taste and I like how I feel when I take it consistently more than when I don't. So if you ever wanna try it for yourself as a way to support Electrified, the link is below and it's drinkag1.com slash electrified or you can use the QR code on the screen to get five travel packs and a one year supply of vitamin D3K2 for free.
Enjoy. CNBC put out a video and an article about the GigaCast movement and Tesla's role in it. But in the article, there was some disinformation. They interviewed a professor who happens to be from Germany who said there are concerns that any damage to large megacasts will be tougher or more expensive to repair or replace simply because of their sheer size. Even in low speed crashes that occur at about 10 miles per hour, you have a deformation of these big parts and currently the car is impossible to repair. And he said that's why companies like BMW and VW have so far steered away from the technique. Well, I beg to differ because if you go back to Tesla's Q2 call last year, that exact problem or criticism was raised. Elon's response was, that must be why everyone's copying us. But then Lars said, that's like simply not true. There's a misconception that traditional bodies are easy to repair, but they're made of multiple materials and multiple joining methods. Using an example of replacing a rear cast rail on a Model Y to do that versus like what we replaced it with from the Model 3, it's 10 times cheaper and three times faster to do it with a cast rail. My design team works with our collision repair team since we're closed loop on this with insurance. Plus, I've shared pictures on the channel in the past from subscribers that have actually had their GigaCast repaired and they are modular in a sense where they have individual parts that can be removed and replaced. So it's not really a situation where if part of this giant megacast is damaged, then you have to replace the whole thing. That's just not true. This seems like a German professor just providing a justification for the lack of innovation from BMW and VW. RJ Scaringe gave a very long interview to Decoder, which is part of The Verge, and in it he did say that other companies need to stop copying the Tesla Model Y because they can't do it better than Tesla, and that the EV market is already saturated with Teslas and Tesla wannabes. But the reason I'm sharing this is because RJ added some more color to the new VW part Partnership. He said, we will provide the topology of the ECUs, electronic control units, along with the base operating system. That's both for the infotainment platform, but also for the real-time operating system. There's a few different operating systems we've built, and then everything around over-the-air updates and connectivity. But what we won't be providing is our user interface. In all the different products this platform will go into, the user interface is actually an abstraction on top of the stack. A vehicle may have three screens, it may have two screens, it may have 10 screens. That's relatively simple to change what the UI looks like, but everything underneath will be really heavily commonized using our architecture. And he said things like drive units, battery systems, vehicle platforms, our autonomy system, our perception stack, steering systems, braking systems, all the those systems stay fully within Rivian. What goes into the joint venture is this family of ECUs. RJ also said this deal with VW gives it a lot more negotiating power when it comes to its suppliers, specifically with semiconductor companies as after the announcement, RJ got a handful of phone calls from CEOs saying that they're able to do a bit better on pricing now that Rivian is expected to have much greater volumes. RJ did spend some time praising Tesla, talking about the Model Y. He said, I think it's an awesome car. I've owned one before. It's just to say, I think the world needs more variety. Rivian has also introduced its first charging outpost, they're calling it. This one is near Yosemite National Park. The indoor amenities will be available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week, but the fast chargers in the bathrooms will be open 24 seven. Inside, they'll have a lounge and some snacks and some merchandise available, and they did say this is a blueprint that they plan to expand. Peter Rawlinson was asked how Lucid is going to respond to the Rivian and VW partnership. To that that he said, you could say, how is Rivian gonna respond because the gravity is gonna be the best SUV out there and no one will be able to compete with it. To me, product is king. Bring it on. I've driven the R1S and I've driven the gravity. I'm not worried. He also said, if you only come away with one thing from this meeting with me today, do not think of Lucid as a niche luxury car company. We are gonna be huge. I want us to sell a million units a year and have a much bigger impact than that. And you know, Elon, I love Elon Musk. Do we love him? I love him. And I'm constantly talking about electric cars, but I don't mean I'm against, I'm totally for them, but whatever the market says, and if it's 10% of the market, 12%, 7%, 20%, whatever it is, it's okay. But you can't have 100% electric cars. 
And you know, so Elon endorsed me recently, the other day, actually. He's great. Elon Musk. He's a brilliant guy. Every time I call him, he's talking about, I got a new idea for a rocket. You have to hear this. No, it's true. You know, the first time I ever saw this, I'm watching television like three years ago, and I see a rocket engine, motor engine, come down landing straight up in there. No wings, no nothing. And it's landing. I thought I was seeing things. What is that? Now, if that were government, you wouldn't see that for another 50 to 100 years. But it was Elon. You know, he's a very advanced person, and he's doing other things that are great, and so are other. We have to make we have to make life good for our smart people, you know? We have some smart people. We have to make life good for our smart people. And he's as smart as you get. No, he's, he's a great guy. He really is. But, you know, he's never mentioned to me, why are you hitting the electric cars? Because he understands I'm not hitting it. I think it's incredible. I've had them. I've driven them. They're incredible. But they're not for everybody. Some people have to drive long distances. On X, Elon was asked, are you going to comment on Trump's EV policy announcements or what? To which Elon said, it will be fine. Porsche just said they're expecting their EV transition to take longer than they originally thought. The goal was to shoot for 80% of sales to be all electric by 2030, but now they're saying they're going to tie it explicitly to customer demand and developments in the sector. So now they're only going to hit that 80% target if those factors warrant it. In a statement, they said the transition to EVs is taking longer than we thought five years ago. VW is still scrambling for answers in the EV world as now we hear about this new partnership between Xpeng and VW where they've established project houses for engineers. They'll be located in China and they'll be warehouses for engineers from both parties to work together. They're saying from 2026, all EVs of the VW brand in China will be equipped with this very powerful and efficient architecture. Tesla stock closed the day at $251.51, up 5.15%, while the NASDAQ was up 1.58%. It was a normal volume day for Tesla, trading about 10 million shares below the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, Tesla's Q2 earnings will be tomorrow on Tuesday, so no video from me. I'll catch up with you all again on Wednesday. Thank you for bearing with me for this abbreviated episode, and don't forget, if you're interested, check out AG1 linked below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.